So with the straight line, the parabola and the exponential, well the pattern we followed was that we first introduced ourselves to it by plotting it using the table method and then we learned the proper way how to draw it. So a quick recap, with the straight line we typically found the x-intercept by making y0 and we found the y-intercept by making x0. So we found the x-intercept and we found the y-intercept. With the parabola, which typically looks like this, we found the two x-intercepts and we found the y-intercept. For the exponential graph, we typically found the asymptote line and the y-intercept and sometimes there would be an x-intercept as well, such as that. So we would have an x-intercept, a y-intercept and an asymptote. And so if you ever forget what you need to draw a graph, I always suggest to people just draw one and that will remind you. So we know a hyperbola usually has this dotted line, we saw that in the previous videos, and then it's usually got two halves like that. So it appears that we would need to know where it cuts over here, so that would be called an x-intercept because that's where it cuts the x-axis. We would need to know where the dotted line is and that's called the not the y-intercept, Kevin, that's called the asymptote. So we'd need to know that equation. And that's about it. There is something else we're going to add, and that's just an extra point because some teachers require that. But I'll show you as we go along. So the main thing is we need to, we need to know the x-intercept and the asymptote. So let's start with the asymptote. We know that this part, what does that part do to any kind of graph? Well, well done if you said that it shifts the graph four units up. And so... A uh, hyperbola's asymptotes are usually just the x and the y axis. However, if you shift a graph four units up, then that's going to shift this x axis or the x asymptote, it's going to shift that up as well. And so there we have it. We have the asymptote, and so that's four units up, and so we know that the y value over here would be four, the y value there would be four, and there, and there and there, and there. So the y value of that whole line is just 4, and so we call it y equals to 4. The next thing, okay, so asymptote, done. Now we're going to find the x-intercept. Now the x-intercept is where the graph cuts the x-axis. So remember, if you want to find the x-intercept, you need to be able to tell this equation something important about this line. Now what do we know about every single point on this line? What do we know about the y value? of the point on that line. For example, if I look at this point over here, it's one, two, three, four places to the left, so its x value is minus four, but its y value is zero. This point over here, it's two places to the right, so that's two, but its y value is zero. And so on this x-axis, the y value is always zero. So let's go to this equation and say, hey equation, your y value is zero on that pink line, so could you please tell us what the x value is on that on that line? And then you're going to have to solve. So what we do is we take this 4 over to the left hand side and so we end up like that. And now what you could imagine is that this is an equation. And because there is a fraction, because of this x at the bottom, you need a common denominator. Now the common denominator is going to be x. And so you're going to have to multiply this one. You're going to have to multiply that by x, like that. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And so what we're going to end up with is minus 4x over x equals to 2 over x. And when it's an equation, you can ignore these x's over there. And so we end up with minus 4x equals to 2. So to get x alone, you're going to have to divide by negative 4. And so you're going to end up with 2 over negative 4. And so 2 over negative 4, if you simplify that, that's going to be negative. And then 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 twice. And so the answer is negative a half. And so on this x-axis, we know that the, the x value is negative a half. And so I'm going to go to the negative half like that. Okay, now did you know that that over there is all the information that we need to know what this graph is going to look like? Because we said that these graphs either go like this and like that, or they go in these two quadrants, whoa, that was really terrible, or they go like this and like that. So which of those combinations goes through the x-intercept that we found? Well, it's the red combination, right? And so it's going to be this combination over here that goes through this x-intercept. And so I've gone and I've labeled this coordinate over here which is very important, we've labeled this. And then typically your teacher's gonna want you to find any other point. 
Okay, so choose a point. Okay, I'm going to choose x equals to 1. So I'm going to go tell this equation. Hey, equation, when the x value is 1 on your graph, what is the y value at that point? So you go to the equation and you plug in the x value of 1 and 2 over 1 is 2 and then 2 plus 4 is 6. So the equation tells us that when the x value is 1, then the y value is 6. Now that will probably be somewhere over here. I'm not drawing everything perfectly according to scale. Teachers don't mind that, but what they do want is just that you have coordinates. And so there we've done it. We've given them the asymptote, we've given them the x-intercept, and then we've labeled one other point. So just check if your teacher wants the one other point. Most teachers do.